Good evening and welcome to Rescuing Families. When we talk about transformation of families, usually people think about transformation of someone else, how another person can change. But today I want to talk to you about permanent transformation and what that has to do with you and not your family. That's right. Permanent transformation in your family has to do with you first. And you will learn how you can do that to bless your family. Let's listen to this beautiful song. We'll come back in just a moment to talk to you about this. I've made with you a covenant Holy Spirit Come and fill this place On your holy altar will be one Holy Spirit Burning fire Holy Spirit, give me more of you. Holy Spirit, here am I. Oh Lord, make me a flaming fire. I've made with you a covenant Holy Spirit come and fill this place on your holy altar will be one Holy Spirit burning fire Spirit, here am I. Holy Spirit, give me more of you. Holy Spirit, here am I. Thank you. 
inside of me. Burn inside of me. Welcome back. The Word of God says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Look, all things become new. So God's Word is very clear to say that when we are in Christ, we become a new person. Now, if you really want to see a change in your family, you have to look at yourself first. That's the most important thing. Wanting someone in your family to be a new person, a different person, when you haven't changed yet, it's not very fair. So the change starts with us. When we become a new man, a new woman, then there is also a transformation. Consequently, in our family, it's a chain reaction it starts with you and it goes on to your family but the question is how can you change you know a lot of people they desire the power to become a new person but by themselves they are unable to do that they don't have the strength that it takes and this is where the holy spirit the spirit of god comes in you can see here right now on the screen that uh, starting from Thursday, we will have the fast of the Holy Spirit in preparation for the night vigil of the first love this Friday. Now, the Spirit of God has the power to transform us. When you look at so many people in our church all over the world who are criminals and now are men of integrity, are men of success, family men. When you look at people who were addicts and are now helping others to be free from their addictions because they are free. When you see testimonies of people who were selfish, angry, uh, hateful, and now these people are loving, forgiving, it's because this has been the work of the Holy Spirit. This is not something that a pastor can do or that willpower can do. And perhaps you find yourself defeated in wanting to become this new person. You find yourself failing to become the person you want to be. Because maybe you are trying to do this by your own strength. It's impossible. Because it's the Spirit of God that changes us into a new person. Just like it happened to this person you're going to watch right now. See what God has done in this person's life through the Holy Spirit. We're going to come back to talk about how you also can change into this new person. Tell us the story of where all your problems began, how your struggle began. Okay, uh, my, my problems began from uh, a youngster where um, my mum and dad got into a conflict and uh, my mum was um, thrown out of the house and as a result I was thrown out afterwards. Um, I, I grown up uh, lost without any guidance, um, thrown out of school. Then I started to go down um, the drug route. As a result of this I, I became very advanced, um, streetwise advanced. I had loads of money for the age that I was at um, and for the people that I was around. and. Uh, they looked, the, my friends at my age looked at me um, as the father figure, as I looked at elderly people because um, I was very advanced and they wanted what I had. At the age of 16, 17, I had a, um, an R6, a super bike, diamond watches, had uh, cars at a young age, had uh, anything I wanted, I, I, I didn't lack it. Of course, those things come at a price. There was a point where surely things started to go wrong. What was the worst point of your life where you, you thought that something had to change? 
there was a time where I was in college and um, it was a drought. A drought is where the, there was no drugs coming in. A friend approached me to start selling crack at here and I was saying no, 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 but then I needed to keep the money coming in to maintain my lifestyle. Going down that road, you have to be very t territorial. If you, if you don't, your money would, would not come in because anyone else would just come into your area and sell drugs there. So I've I done things to protect my area. Like one, a bad thing I've done was uh, cut someone's face with a razor blade from eye to mouth. One time I was uh, going to get stopped, I had, uh, had drugs um, stashed away. I heard them on the radio. They said they were taking me for a search and I punched the police officer and um, I ran away because I was on bail for something else. You came to a point where you thought something has to change, I've got to do something. Yeah. How did your life change? Before I got into all of this, my, my mum used to bring me to the UCKG. And when I was at the lowest point, um, I decided to, to come back. Something happened and then I went to prison and then I came back out. And then in prison, before prison, I made up my mind I was going to give my life to God. How long have you been a different man? Because you're no longer involved in that lifestyle. How long have you been free from that? Seven years. Seven years. In those seven years, you went from doing that to now. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now? I remember sitting in my cell. I've made a plan in my cell. And every, I've even um, accomplished more than what I planned in my prison cell. I, I planned to get married. I plan um, to get my driving license. That was the first thing I done. Then I get mar got married. I got a degree, and then I'm even doing a master's degree, which was not even, even in my thoughts. Would you be happy to reveal to people at home your identity? Of course, there's nothing to hide. My name is Darren Gibbons. I'm a family man, and uh, I'm a changed man. I've come a long way. I'm accomplished uh, university degrees. Uh, currently studying my masters and working in the same field that I'm studying in. So you saw there now how the Holy Spirit changes a person, transforms a person. And you can have the same, you can see the same thing happening in your life. But for that to happen, you need to understand it will be the Spirit of God that will change you to become this person. And for you to receive the Holy Spirit, it's necessary that you desire Him more than anything else. It's necessary not to say that you desire Him, but to truly desire Him. Because when you really want something that is important to you, everything else becomes second plan, becomes not as important. My dear friend, aren't you tired to be defeated by yourself? defeated by your bad habits? Aren't you tired that your family know perhaps that you follow a certain faith but you don't live that faith and they even say that you are a hypocrite, that you are a lie, a fake? You want to be a person of God so that others want to follow the same example? You need the Spirit of God, you need the Holy Spirit. When there is this transformation in you, then this transformation will reach everyone else in your family and in your home. Let's watch now one more testimony when we come back. I want to pray for you. You that are looking for a transformation, a change in your inner self, in your inner being, in your heart, your way of thinking, your mentality. Maybe you find it impossible to forgive, impossible to move forward. But you can receive the strength of God to be that person you want to become. Let's now watch this testimony. We'll come back in just a second to pray for you. My lowest point was when I was, when I was feeling so depressed, looking at mothers pushing their push chairs on the high street. We, we used to wonder why we are not having a child although everything was fine with us physically. It's nice to feel, why can't God, why can't I conceive? What's the problem? Why can't I have a child? What's wrong, God? There was not much family pressure from our parents, but we ourselves felt, you know, there was something missing to become a family. We were just husband and wife, but we were not a family. 
The doctor said everything is fine. We had a couple of tests done. Physically, there was no problem at all. And, and we were ready to have a child any moment. I felt very empty. I felt that I think the utmost happiness for a woman would be to become pregnant and to deliver a child. We are doing everything from our side, but still things are not working out. So we used to get very upset at, at, at some points. And even though our relation has been always uh, very nice, but because of this thought of not having a child would, uh, would lead us to an argument which was sometimes we felt it was completely unnecessary. I was feeling quite low and there were times I was quite depressed. What is it that I can't do? I knew there was no other problem when I went to the doctors and they said there's no problem, we can do this, we can do that for you, no tablets, nothing, nothing could help me. When, when we were going through this phase in our life, it was only faith and, and, and belief in God that things are going to work out very well and, and we, we have to support each other. With God's direction and, and advice, we have to believe if we want to achieve something and at that point we wanted to achieve having our own child. The minute I started believing in that, within a couple of months, I was actually pregnant. I didn't know that I was actually carrying a baby for around four to five weeks and then I tested and I was pregnant at that time. So believing in the Word of God, believing in the Bible, what God has done for so many people. Nothing else can, could, have, could have helped us apart from believing and having strong faith. Hearing testimonies of people which made a difference as I'm doing today. So many people's life have changed transformed from what they were and what they are today is a dramatic change and I thought yes this is what I want this is where I want to stand and, and this is where I want to give my testimony that today I'm here so I had a vision of that that I'm going to give my own testimony and God will honor me God God will honor my faith we were very much blessed uh, keeping our belief and faith uh, that that uh, our child is going to be born very healthy and, 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 and going to make us proud whatever he or she would do. I'm completely happy. Um, as a family, we are happy together all the time. We're enjoying life together. That's what we wanted to be, a complete family. Although it's challenging, but you grow as a woman, as a mother, and you learn so many things. It's, I would say, the ultimate thing to be a mother. Have the belief, have faith in God, the believe that there is something like God and uh, who, who, can, who can give advice. Things are going to work out fine and, and, and good days are going to come. So never give up on what you want to achieve. And I can very happily say this because what our son today is nearly, uh, he's two years and four months. He's uh, wherever we go, he's, he's like a center of attraction. He's, uh, uh, he, he was just one year old and uh, he, he could say his own name and he started talking at the age of one year old. Name is Arish. It was only through those difficult times that we uh, went through and kept our belief and our determination and today we are blessed uh, completely having him. Don't give up, have faith, have belief in God, God can transform your life. Believe in yourself and believe that God is there. When you feel worried about your life, when it becomes too difficult to bear and you need that special someone to help you ease your pain, it's time for you to give God the opportunity to remove all your worries. Let us talk with God together. My Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we know that you are the only one who has the power to change, the power to transform. 
No one else can do this. In fact, many people try by their own strength to change their nature, to change who they are, to change who they have been their whole lives. And they fail. They fail because it's not something that can be done with human strength. But your Holy Spirit, my Lord, that has access to our thoughts, our mind and our hearts, your Holy Spirit that has access to areas in our life that doctors cannot reach, counselors, psychiatrists cannot reach, your Spirit can reach there, can change that person, my Lord. My Father, I pray that those who desire your Holy Spirit more than anything, as they prepare for the night vigil of the first love, as they prepare for the fast of the Holy Spirit, Lord, cause this change in them that only your Spirit can perform. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, this fast of the Holy Spirit will happen starting from Thursday. Choose, if you can, maybe six hours to fast every day from Thursday until next week, Wednesday. It will be one week of preparing yourself to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit so that as we read, you can become a new creature in Christ. All right? May God bless you abundantly. We'll see you again in this program next week. But tomorrow, there'll be more programs of faith here on this Facebook page. God bless you. Bye-bye.